When you start watching Yellowstone, it doesn't take long for the conflict between Beth and Jamie to appear. The first few seasons, you may find yourself switching back and forth between Team Jamie and Team Beth, and by season five, you may have finally made up your mind. But what does the music say? Hey, you knew when you clicked on this it was going to be about the music. By the time you start watching season five, it's clear that the relationship between Jamie and Beth is completely broken. I mean, he arranged for her involuntary sterilization and she goaded him into killing his biological father. You wonder how this could get any worse. But of course it does when Beth finds out that Jamie has a son. And being Beth, she not only goes ballistic and nearly crashes the car, but she also promises him that she'll take his son away from him. I was ready to chalk this up to just another Beth and Jamie moment until I heard the music underscoring the scene. Up to this point, the score is fairly typical, with some ominous strings underscoring the tension. But after her threat, there is something completely different. I'm going to take him from you. I'm going to rob you of father and Jamie. You don't deserve it. And he deserves better than you. Next time you see him, you can kiss him goodbye because he's as good as gone. All right, let's just listen to the music so you can really hear what I'm talking about. That dissonance, bouncing cello effect is unlike anything we've heard up to this point, so it really stood out. At first, I thought it was an indicator that Beth had pushed Jamie too far, something like a musical depiction of cognitive dissonance, where Jamie's desire to protect his son comes into direct conflict with his desire to protect himself. I was honestly surprised that he didn't actually run Beth over right after this. So after watching the mid-season finale... I shifted my analysis. In the mid-season finale, that dissonant, bouncing cello effect makes a reprise. Beth has confronted Jamie after the whole impeachment thing, and he basically laughed in her face and called her naive. And so she goes home and suggests to her father that maybe it's time to have Jamie taken out. Meanwhile, Jamie is telling Sarah that maybe it's time to have Beth taken out. This is some pretty grim stuff on both sides. So, guess where the dissonant cello comes in? It doesn't come in when Beth suggests to her father that it may be time to send Jamie to the train station. If there is a place our enemies go and nobody ever knows they went, then they will never come back. Then I think that's the place for Jamie. What do you think, Daddy? But in the very next scene, 
when Jamie broaches taking a contract out on Beth with Sarah, it makes a reappearance. They're professionals. They're not hitmen. It'll look like a heart attack or a car accident. Perhaps I could uh, meet with them and see how they would handle this. No, Jimmy, you don't want to do that. You tell me what you want, and I will meet with them. See, if you're going to go after her, you just might... Maybe... You know? Yeah. I find it interesting that this dissonant sound only seems to be associated with Jamie's desire to do harm to Beth. It's not used as a signal that someone wants to kill someone else. It's a signal that Jamie wants to kill Beth. More than a signal, I think it's commentary telling us who is the real bad guy here. So what do you think? Is this dissonant cello predicting the death of Beth? Is it a musical illustration of Jamie's soul? I guess we'll find out when the season picks up again. Well, thanks for listening. Talk to you later.